You're listening to The Head Trash Show with me, Alexia Leachman, author of Clear Your Head Trash. Head Trash is the home to the Head Trash Clearance Method, which you can use to get rid of the fears, stresses and anxieties in your life. Every week, I'll be sharing insights, stories and interviews to inspire you to clear your head trash so that you can find calmness, confidence and clarity in your life and work. To find out more about clearing head trash and creating a headspace, head over to clearyourheadtrash.com. And now for today's show. Hello and welcome back to The Head Trash Show. This is your host, Alexia Leachman, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, in today's episode, I want to talk about your head trash clearance practice and why it needs to be a practice rather than a one-off hit of something that you might do once and then not go back to again. Now, if you take a close look at the podcast artwork or the cover of my book, you'll see there's a picture of a head with a squiggly line in the head and that squiggly line represents the head trash it's basically just a big scribble and another way you could describe it is maybe a big tangled ball of string or another another thing that it reminds me a lot of that was inspired by it was that that drawer that everybody has somewhere in their kitchen or hallway that is full of all the old mobile phone charging leads and they're all just tangled up in a big mess and so when you want to get one of those wires or charging cables out, right? You you might go there and think, oh yeah, I need that one. I need to get that one out. So you kind of pull one out on its own. And then, and then you get that one out and that's great. You can kind of do a little happy dance around the room, but then you've still got this big ball of tangled nonsense that still needs to be dealt with. And that's very much like head trash. You can go in and you can pull a strand out. You can clear something out, one thing that's bothering you today and you will feel much better for it. But there's still all this other stuff that you haven't quite dealt with or looked at that still needs to be dealt with. And so this is why it needs to be a practice because it isn't, head trash clearance isn't a one-off job. Now, if I said to you, um, you know, let's say it was trash day tomorrow and you had all your bins ready, you've taken them all outside and then you came back in and you were like, oh, you know, that's great. I've taken my trash out and that's it. I won't have to do that ever again. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You you don't take your trash out and think I'm done. I'm never going to have to put my rubbish out ever again. Because as we all know, life moves on. Life continues. You will continue to buy stuff that has stuff that might be useful for a short moment and then you need to get rid of it. So the packaging Um, around your food. You need it to get it from the supermarket to your home. But once it's at home, you don't need it anymore and you throw it away. Now, of course, with the environmental movement, packaging is changing quite drastically at the moment, but we're not going to be rid of it that quickly. But also when you think about clothes that you wear, you know, you buy clothes, you enjoy them for a while. Maybe you're really into fashion and you buy clothes and you wear that stuff for a few months and then and then you don't want it anymore. So there's always going to be a need in your home, in your physical life, to get rid of stuff because the more you consume, the more you interact with the world around you, the more you buy, the more stuff at some point you will need to get rid of. And the same is true of your head trash. You can't say that, oh, I've got rid of this now because there's going to be more stuff that piles in. And that's assuming that you had a really good clear out in the first place. A lot of people don't really go through the process of having a really good clear out. Now, if you imagine that you had not thrown your trash out throughout the whole of your 20s. Can you imagine what kind of mess you'd have in your house right now? So let's just take that and imagine what kind of mess might be in your head. Now, of course, not everyone in listening is gonna have a complete nightmare of a mess in terms of head trash in their head. But if you've never really done any inner exploratory work, any facing up to your fears, any um, any emotional clearance work, then there will be this buildup in your head that's really going to be creating you a lot of mental clutter and it's going to be slowing you down, getting in the way of some clear thinking, some clear decision making and some connecting to your intuition. There's lots of other, you know, good night's sleep, good skin. I mean, goodness me, I could carry on all day about the impact that our head trash has on us. But if you've never gone through that clearance process, of going through, and it doesn't mean you have to do that using the head trash clearance method. You could be doing that in any number of ways in terms of dealing with the stuff that's in your mind and getting rid of the stuff that no longer serves you. There are lots of ways of doing that, but if you've never gone through that process, 
then you've probably got a heap of stuff that you need to deal with. You know, a really good place to start when we think, you know what, I'm going to sort out my head trash, is to have a really good clear out, a, a sort of a kickstart um, process where you really go deep. You re- you know, it's like going in and let's say you've kind of, um, you, you decide you're just going to have a spring clean in your house. You don't sort of mess about just getting the hoover out and a cloth out. You think, I'm going to empty the room, I'm going to empty the wardrobes. You know, you might do a Marie Kondo on your house and it's really deep and cleansing and satisfying. And the same can be said of doing that with your head trash, you know, really going in and looking at all those inner conflicts, the value conflicts, the emotional conflicts, the fears, the things that are sapping your confidence. I mean, it's really, I find that I get really excited doing that. When clients come to me and they want like this big head trash clear out, I get really excited about that kind of work. Um, And so I will always encourage people to kind of do that big clear out to kickstart your process because it makes the maintenance, the ongoing practice so much easier. You know, if you imagine you want to lose a lot of weight and, you know, you might start by being quite drastic. You might decide that you're going to change your diet significantly. You might hire a personal trainer and you, you really want to lose a ton of weight in, in a reasonably short period of time. And then let's say you achieve your goal weight. Then beyond that, you don't just kind of throw everything else out the window. You carry on and you maintain. And so you maintain, you still go to the gym. Maybe you don't sort of work out five times a week. Maybe you know, sort of bring it back to two times a week. So, but there is still a maintenance, a practice going on that enables you to stay where you're at and to keep, you know, to keep in good shape. And the same is it's the same with head trash stuff. So you might have this big clear out at the beginning, but then you still need to keep an eye on that stuff that's coming in, those those beliefs that are still getting in your way, holding you back, those emotional conflicts that are just causing you to get annoyed by this, like these work colleagues or whatever it is that gets tr- you get triggered day-to-day life. You're still, these things are happening. And, and of course, new experience happened to you. You know, as you maybe you push the envelope in your life, as you jump out of your comfort zone, you have new fears to face. You have new comfort zones that you're reaching. There's always something new to explore and to clear on the personal growth journey. So um, for me, when I get people coming to me and they want one head trash clearance session, I think, well, that's great. That's brilliant. You're going to, this. we're going to clear this thing. So maybe it might be a phobia of needles and injections or or something similar like that where we, we're doing this one thing that's really going to help them in that moment in that time of their life that's really going to help them but really to experience true um, change and to notice a real change in how you feel inside your head you it's it's a practice it, it's a it's a boatload of work and I say a boatload you know it depends on what kind of a state you're in right but um it doesn't have to be as much as you imagine so for example I had a lady that came to me not that long ago her um she was being made redundant so she had some money that was given to her by her company to help her to find the next job and so she came to me and said I really, really, really want to do some head trash clearance. And so I said, well, what is it? What do you want to achieve? What what do you want out of this process? And she said, I just want the voices in my head to stop. I just want, I just want peace and quiet in my head. And I thought, whoa, that's kind of like, that's, that's a big ask. But I was really excited by it because I know exactly in order to achieve that, I, I'm like, right, this is what we need to do. This is how we're going to go about it. We absolutely did achieve that. We achieved that in less than two months. And at the end of it, she's like, I'm at peace now. I don't have, I'm not arguing with myself all the time. I'm not replaying these conversational loops in my head constantly. I'm not debating. I'm not sort of uh, not speaking up when I could because I'm, I daren't. You know, I'm, I'm basically she was just more at peace with herself, more present, more mindful. And so when I say there's a boatload of work required, I mean, yes, there could be a short period of intense work where there's a lot of this clearance happening, but my goodness, the change can happen very, very quickly, very quickly indeed. Um, but then you need to carry on. You you can't, you, if you stop, then it, it's just going to gather again. It's like with the trash at home. You can't say, oh, I've had this big clear out at home and that's it. I'm not going to have to clear out my house again. You know, you're going to have the ongoing weekly trash cycle. But then, you know, this time in six months, in a year, you're going to have to do your house clearance stuff again because there's going to be new clothes that need throwing out. There's going to be new bits and pieces that you think, oh, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. Um, I need to get rid of it. I need to clear some space so I can kind of feel relaxed in this place, you know. And the same goes to your head. You need to have a clear out so that you can relax in your own company, not feel like you have to distract yourself constantly by your phone, by TV, by um, what binging on a Netflix documentary, whatever it is. You know, how about just being? How about just being in nature? Do you have to always have your earbuds on when you go for a walk or when you get, get, get take some transport? Could you just not sit with yourself 
And generally, those that struggle to sit with just themselves as company are trying to distract themselves because of the head trash, because of this constant noise in the head. They just want it to stop. They just want... They don't want to argue with themselves anymore. They don't want to replay that conversation that they wish had gone differently. And they keep changing the ending of what they should have said. Does that happen to you? I know I've been through that. And it still happens to me to a degree. And then I then I realise what's going on and then I work on that bit. There's always new stuff to clear. You know, I've been clearing my head trash like a, a demon possessed for, I don't know, about 10 years. And there's always new stuff to clear. There always is. But it's so much easier to maintain that practice once you're on a, in a good place than allowing it to get out of control and thinking, my goodness, I can't even find a way out here. I feel so overwhelmed. My anxiety's off the charts. Um, I feel so fearful. I don't want to do anything. I, I, uh, I can't even face going out to do anything that's good for me. My, I can't do self-care because I don't love myself enough. If you allow those feelings, that, that head trash to accumulate, then it can really manifest itself in some very difficult situations in your life. Um, and also manifest as dis-ease, you know, dis-ease in terms of lack of ease with who you are, lack of ease with 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 your thoughts, with your feelings. So yeah, I, I realise I have gone off on a little bit of a rant, but I just want to impress on you the need to consider head trash clearance as a practice, as something that you put time aside regularly for, that you are always curious about and think, oh, um, maybe I should work on that. Maybe I'll add that to my list and I'll do that when I do my my monthly clearance session or my weekly clearance session or whatever whatever rhythm that you feel you want to put in place in your life. And it's going to be different for everybody, right? Because we're all in such different places and we all respond so differently to what's going on around us. So, you know, I know I go through bursts. I, I, I've always got a list on the go. And sometimes I'll just go through a really intense session of a few days where I'll just do loads and loads of clearance and then I'll kind of back off for a few weeks and then I'll go back and do that again so it really is different for everybody you get some people that are like you know those are really big, big fans of the miracle morning they'll be getting up really early in the morning and and have their different elements of their their daily practice that they they do for themselves and so head trash clearance could be a good part of a regular practice like that if you like getting up a few hours early before the rest of the house awakes then that could be a good time for you to do some head trash clearance so it really does depend on what's going to work for you but I just want to impress on you I think it really is a practice that we can um that will have the most impact in your life when it does become a practice because when it is a one-off you know if you think back to exercise yes it, you can go off and go for a really long walk or go on a skiing holiday and, and you've done a load of exercise that week but really for your body and mind to benefit from exercise it's a regular thing um and the mind and the body are so connected that I think we need to be thinking about that in terms of mental health and emotional health as well we can't be ignoring our mental health and ignoring our emotional health health and just looking at it sporadically because it affects so many aspects of our lives and it's the beginning of so much you know when we have difficulties with emotional and mental stuff it's that's the beginning of stuff that might then show up later in the body so it really is such an important aspect of our lives that I think it warrants a regular practice so that is what I want to share with you today, is encouraging you to think about what is your regular head trash clearance practice going to be, whether it is with the head trash clearance method or whether it's another method. There are so many emotional clearance methods out there. It can be with any any of those. If you can find one that you can get on with, that you can do to yourself, where you can just keep up to, you know, keep on top of it so things don't get out of control, that you're able, you feel emotionally strong, mentally strong, in the most part, because of course, you know, even by doing this stuff, you're still going to have days where you get hit by a curveball. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you're much more able to bounce back by having this strong foundation of emotional resilience, by having these regular practices in your life. So think about when you might be putting this aside, when you might be doing this in your life. Think about what resources you're going to need to maintain this. Whether, you know, maybe you need the support of a group. Maybe you're quite happily doing this on your own. Uh, maybe you need the support of somebody to really kick butt you along this journey and regularly check in with you. I can be that person, by the way. I have, this is how I support my clients. We, we do big clear outs together. Um, we also do more long-term clearance work as well. So sometimes you need somebody else to help you with that. And that's absolutely fine. Okay, so I wanted to share that with you. I hope this has been a useful exercise and I look forward to catching you next time here on The Head Trash Show. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in. 
You've just been listening to me, Alexi Leachman, here on The Head Trash Show. If you enjoyed the show or the book, Clear Your Head Trash, I'd really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes or Amazon. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes for more insights, interviews and inspiration for clearing your head trash and reclaiming your headspace. Until next time, bye for now.